Yes, it is. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. True. Dr. True is a board-certified physician. No, it's your hair. An addiction medicine specialist. There you like go. Looking over my top of my head, huh? Drew's got a little of that uh, George Clooney thing going on tonight, and uh, and it works. <laughs> Matt Stone and Trey Parker. <laughs> Drew, you all right? That is the most energy Drew's expelled on this show since uh, I've been doing it for two and a half years. Wipe the mic down. From uh, South Park and uh, basketball and um, and what else? Uh, we, that's I enough. That's about all right now, yeah. And what do you guys, uh, well, you've, you've been doing a lot of interviews and doing the junket and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and uh, I assume yeah. you're fairly burnt out. And so I'll just ask you what you want to talk about. I mean, you want to talk about South Park? You want to talk about the movie? You want to talk about both? We're I guess gonna, we came to talk about sex. But just go to calls. Yeah, nah, yeah just go to calls. We don't want to talk about Really? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to plug it? It's out the 31st, right? Yeah, it's out this uh, Friday. Yeah, baseball's out the 31st. Right. Yeah, go see it. Really great. Go see it. Okay. Hey, everyone's been talking about it. It looks good. The commercials look good. And uh, David Z David Zucker is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Kentucky Fried Movie was one of my... I've seen that movie like 7,000 times. No, Pardon? definitely us, too. I mean, growing up. That's why we did this. That's why we did this movie. I mean, and it was, it, was, it was a funny thing because we were actually asked to do this movie before South Park was on the air. Um, we knew David, and he asked us to star in this movie and we're like are you crazy we're not actors and and he just wanted two nobodies but nobody expected south park to sort of take off the way it did and so right. now all of a sudden it's not you know now all of a sudden it's south park all over the yeah. board which we hate. but it kind of makes him cool that he got you guys signed before oh this totally yeah and he had that. to fight really hard with the studio to get two totally unknowns to be in his movie mm -hmm. all right but, who, uh, who wants to finish this line he was a short hasidic jew was no, wait, I screwed it up. Okay. She was six feet of black dynamite. Yeah, yeah, right. He was a, yeah. <laughs> he was All right, a wait, I'll give you another chance. Cleopatra, <laughs> what? I want Cleopatra Jones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, while she burnt the ghetto to the ground. Wow. You guys uh, smoked too much pot. See, this test yeah. stuff, yeah. He kindled the Sabbath candles. Wow. <laughs> I don't, see, I don't think David would even remember Yeah, I don't that. think, I think he'd probably slap you for knowing that. <laughs> Rex. Yeah? You're 15. <laughs> What's going on? Well, my dad remarried, and my stepmom has been asking me to, to take showers with her, like two days out of each week. Two days. What do you mean? What do you mean two days out of each week? At least two days. She asked me. And what do you do? I say no, but I just I was wondering if it's weird or wrong. How old are you? Fifteen. When was your birthday? My birthday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Okay, he's not 15. I know I gave this speech last Thursday when we were in here, but listen, all you stoned, uh, freaked out teenagers, get your get your wagons in line before you call the show. If you're going to lie about your age, fine, but just go ahead and do a little math. <laughs> Drew did this. Who, didn't you do this on Thursday? Yeah. And uh, some guy said he was 47 and he was 14. Yeah. And Drew said, when's your birthday? And the guy went, uh, Around the 80s. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he picked an era as his birthday. <laughs> Around the 80s, yeah. How was the 80s? I think, to give him some credit, I think he said the early 80s. Yeah, the early 80s. 80s. Around the early 80s. Er, early but 80s. This, this, this is not a 15-year-old, and this is not the way this kind of problem would play out. I mean, it's, it's interesting. People call in. It's so easy to tell a bogus call. I mean, people give a story in the the way they think people would behave, but how people actually behave is something totally different. Right, right. And right. only Drew knows. Carrie? <laughs> yeah? You're 17. Yep. Liar! <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Carrie, what's up? Um, well, I've been having problems with my boyfriend. Yeah. He wants to, um, get married. You're 17? Yeah, Hold after it. I graduate and stuff. Get out of what? Well, after I get out of school. When what I graduate this year. He wants year. to get married after they get out of school. Yeah, but what'd you say first after you get out of what? When I graduate and get out of school. Graduate. That's what she said. Uh, yeah. I just don't want to get out of the Some joint. people still graduate, I guess. <laughs> What's my dad doing in Israel? <laughs> All right, Trey, don't don't drag the show down like you normally do. We have big celebrities here tonight. We can't screw around. Uh, Gary, how old's your boyfriend? 18. He'll be 19. And you don't want to get married? I'm not sure. I don't want to make the same mistake my, my older sister made. Good for you. Don't. Marry him at an early age and then find out that he's not the one. And I, I have kids he, with him. I'm not going to make my kids... Uh, go through what my niece is going through right Harry, now. even if he is Mr. Right, he's not Mr. Right. It's just not the right time in your life. 
Uh-uh, and he don't understand that. Well, that's the way it goes. I don't know what to tell him. Well, you tell him whatever you have to tell him. Your instincts, I believe, are very healthy, and you've got to trust that. How long have you been going out with him? Almost a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Does he work around metal? Yeah, he, he works at the Ford plant. Yeah, I got a feeling. I know when a guy works too closely with metal. <laughs> Bad seed. The worst is the guys who work at the uh, muffler shops. You know, guys are, you know, they only got the gig so they could modify their Harley. But they just stayed on for the last 18 years. But guys who work around metal. should 18. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't had time for those alloys to set in the that, neurotoxins. That's, that's, it's a bad omen, Carrie. Don't, ma don't marry this Carrie, guy. He may be an okay guy. He may be Mr. Right even, but just make sure you do it at a time when it's appropriate in your life. Don't well, rush don't in. Don't Look at the data on and marriages data. between 18-year-olds. I mean, I mean, uh, let, let us Look at share the data, young lady. Share, share, the share the data. That, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that none of these marriages Hold are on. Right. Let, let her fire up her overhead projector <laughs> and see if, it, see if it's and suss some of this data out, Drew. <laughs> Look at the data. That's why I have to be here. So, I see that now. Yeah, yeah. That's very Drew, clear. I was kind of wondering what your role was. Now like, it's pretty clear. He's talking to some 14-year-old stoner, and he's going, it's clearly illustrated in this month's JAMA if you turn to page 87. <laughs> I like that guy they brought on the magic hour. Right. Trying to make it funny. I'm yeah. like the white guy. Yeah, <laughs> trying to make it funny. <laughs> this ought to be somewhat funny. You know, it's funny. We've had people say uh, about this show, what about the feminine perspective? <laughs> Who is representing women? And I say, Drew. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Drew definitely. not represents uh, feminism more than uh, feminists do, and he knows more about the vagina than any woman you're I've a, ever met. You're a hell of a guy, Drew. <laughs> it's, I'm delighted to be presented in that, that light. <laughs> <laughs> David. Yeah. You're 21. You guys are great. Fantastic. Um, all right, uh, my friend was uh, accused of murder. I probably says uh, convicted, but I made a mistake. He was accused of murder. He has ADD. I was wondering if this is likely behavior for someone who has this disorder. And I also have a second question. Go ahead. Uh, well, it's not. Just answer the first question. Oh. It's not. Pretending. Yes, sir, David. Uh, <laughs> a, it's the David Show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> ADD. Well, on the sort of diagnostic profile of ADD, uh, murder is not one of the uh, homicide is not What's one of the diagnostic for, Drew? features. But Att attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Now, people with those sorts of disorders can be very impulsive, and that biology can certainly figure into behaviors that somebody might otherwise be able to contain. And oftentimes, they'll start the stabbing and then get distracted halfway into it. <laughs> and you had it. Watch you, some TV or yeah, something. If you were about to stab someone. It takes someone. too much planning to kill somebody. Right. Yeah. But it, this is, cl I mean, when people murder people, it is, it is uh, I mean, usually in the context of other sorts of disorders, either thought disorder or, uh, or, you're, just, or you're just crazy. Started out uh, in the typical behavior, getting uh, involved with uh, drugs, starting out in marijuana. Right. Well, speed makes people behavior. kill. Speed addiction, murder is a typical feature of right. uh, amphetamine addiction. Did you, get, did you get into speed? Yeah, you did. All right. So yeah. that, that could be. Me up. Uh, I'm living here in Hollywood. I'm going to school out here. And when I moved, he found out. And he called me up and he started almost begging me to come back because he got involved with the wrong crowd and he realized it, so he wanted to hang out, start hanging out with me. Well, that's not how people get over. Clean. That's not how people get over addiction. Is this guy best friend of yours? He used to be a best. Who he murder? Uh, Allegedly, camper up uh, in northern Arizona just recently. Not a, well, not here, a happy camper. Here is the deal. Did you, do you ever remember the little aphorism "Speed kills"? That was something was bigger no. than six and seven. You know, wow. am, I, am I referring to something <laughs> that's, that's, that's heavy? I remember well, the, the, guy, the, the guy that developed posters that say "Speed kills." Yeah, I remember the guy that, what? Cliff Branch. There was a sign of, uh, you know, remember Cliff Branch, the uh, wide receiver for the, uh, the Oakland, Raiders Oakland Raiders for all those years? Yeah. There was a picture of him going into the end zone in, like, Oakland uh, uh, the County yeah, Stadium, yeah. and it said Speed Kills. And it had his number on it, so it was, was kind of cool. I see. But I'm <laughs> saying it was it was during the time that that aphorism was out there. Okay. All right, so the guys that developed it, a guy named David Smith up at the Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic, who was a, a prominent player in developing that statement, he says that they really weren't intending to give the impression that speed killed you if you used it, though it certainly if you use enough of it, it can't, but that people who use speed kill. Oh, okay. And that's, it's, it's, it is the drug of violence. Okay, okay. and my second question is uh, less serious. Um, I get approached a lot, however, when, by, by women, and uh, however, when I do the approaching, I get 100% of the time I've been rejected. I don't understand what's going on. You, you're a pretty, pretty good-looking guy. Yeah, I'm decent-looking. You have uh, two legs, three legs? 
Everything's attached. Yeah, welcome to the world. That's the way it works. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't ever change. And yeah, it I, doesn't I, ever change. Oh, wow. Even if you get all rich and famous, they still ignore you. Yeah. What is the difference between the girls that come up to you and the ones that you go after? About 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> in that six well, pack. It's, it's funny. I go to a club and I get, it, like, this past time, this past weekend, I went. <laughs> Drew loves a chubby chick joke, by the no, way. No, it wasn't that part. It was the six pack part. <laughs> I, was just, I was just standing around and uh, three girls come up to me at once. And uh, then it eventually came up to where they were both dragging me by the arms to the dance floor. I'm not making this up. This is, it was outrageous to me. Even I was surprised. So and then they the, separated from me. And what's the problem? I don't understand. Why do I always get, get approached easily? Uh, but when I do the approaching, I get rejected. Why don't you just not do any approaching? Sounds like you're doing all yeah. right. Yeah, just wait to be dragged down to the floor yeah. and forced to dance. <laughs> yeah, you got some problems, man. I can't dance. Too. All right. It, uh -huh. Oh, Dave. It, wow. Dave would sound like a, like a good friend if a guy would kill somebody. Can <laughs> <laughs> He had some difficulty. He's that guy. <laughs> oh, see, Drew, do you see what a better planet this would be if everyone just smoked the pot and didn't get on the speed? See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't do that if you were stoned. Yeah. The, oh, Mike. Mike, what'd you do? Uh, hang, hang, hang a lavalier from your bong over the weekend and uh, part was, that up? Right, he just set up a microphone, a tape recorder in his bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, leave, uh, leave Dooley alone. All right, let's uh, get another call in here. Manuel. Oh, hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, you're 16. Yeah, you guys are cool. You guys are the best, huh? Who? Yeah, who are you talking to? Trey or us? Both of you guys. <laughs> well, there's four of us, you jackass. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mayo, what's going on? Um, yeah, it's, I've been uh, having like this thing where I want—I want to be in the film industry. I want to be an actor, and everybody keeps telling me it's better to go to acting school than you know, like to go out and freelance it. So we, we say it's better just to go to college and. No, study. we don't. Yeah. Let's ask, ask but, Matt but, and Trey. Wouldn't you guys agree it's better not to go to acting school? It's better not to go to acting school, okay. yeah, because yeah. It's, it's better. What we did is we became hackers, where we're hack actors, and oh. people still give you money, and you don't have to know how to act at all. I mean, we're, we're, we're terrible. We're not actors. We're hacks. Yeah. yeah. But, but did you, guys you can make, still make lots of money. I mean, did you guys it's not acting. graduate college? Yeah, yeah I did. I, I got kicked out. But Trey don't you think that the getting an education, is using, making your mind work is better than learning a craft at the age of there's 16? No, I mean, there's only so much you can learn with acting. I mean, it's like not like you're going to go to a class and learn. It is true that what you, what you got to learn is, is be in a bigger social environment than high school was, and that's what you go to college for, not even really to learn, you know, certain things, but just to be with a whole different crowd and go to frat parties and get drunk and, <laughs> and do all that. So that not you, exactly what you I had in mind. More things to make By the way. Yeah, just go to lots of frat parties and get really drunk, yeah. and then you can be an actor. That, that, that is your education. Uh, he wasn't picturing the beer bong when he was saying go to college and get <laughs> oh, that experience. Uh, well, well, oh, yeah, Drew probably, yeah, he probably never did that. Manual? Yeah? What are you, you looking to do, some gay porn? <laughs> no. No. Uh, you <laughs> you got something against gay porn there, buddy? <laughs> yeah. You good looking? Me? Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah. Hey, you well, I get, I get down, yeah. I get, no, I get girlfriends, you know, but it's not like they... Hey, here's, right. here's, what I, me, Manuel, like here's what I say. Whatever you decide to do in your life, is, is depend how successful you are, whatever you decide to do is dependent on what you bring to that endeavor. And the more education you have, and the more of an interesting person you are, and the more interesting experiences you have, the more you have to bring to whatever it is that you do. Well, yeah, but being good looking doesn't help. And if you start, you know, it doesn't hurt. If either, you start you know. limiting yourself at sixteen, it's going to narrow what you have to bring to the table. Don't, and yeah, and stuff. you know what? If you go to acting classes, then that's just lame. People are going to make fun of you. And yeah. Stuff. And how many people went to acting classes and never got a goddamn thing out of it? No. Just, just talk, we we talk to people all day long. Want to go to radio broadcasting school? How many right. people do you know on radio that actually was trained in broadcasting? Nobody. None. I know zero. Certainly not you. Certainly. You've been doing it for, what, 15 years now? Yeah. You still, you've learned nothing in that 15 That's years. That's correct. Here's my know. degree. Can I have a mic now? Can I be on the radio? <laughs> Doug. Yeah. You're 38. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm a professional. i got a family. i uh, been very successful. We've got beautiful home, cars, big boat. Uh, you're on opiates. You're on, you're on pain medicine, huh? Pardon me? Are you on pain medicine? Yeah. How did I know that? I, I started out... Uh, really? What kind of pain meds? Vicodin. Uh, uh, Vicodin. Vicodin. No, I'm giving Drew a dollar. That's pretty <laughs> good. Vicodin. It doesn't... Uh, it says uh, two... Yeah, it says prescription drugs on there, but it doesn't say anything about... Well... Yeah. yeah. What other kind of prescription yeah. drugs yeah. are there? Yeah. Give that dollar back, Drew. Valium, Xanax, sleeping yeah. pills. Chicks, uh, well, that's I, like for I, old chicks with poodles to get on the Valium. 
I take Xanax for uh, anxiety. Well, here's where I was going with this, Doug. Is that, is that, uh, how, mu how, much, how many Vicodin a day are you taking? Um, at one time, I was taking about 15 a day. All right, what are you doing now? And right now, uh, I'm doing like uh, about 10 a day. Are you drinking, too? Uh, I'm not a real big drinker. Every once in a while, I'll have a couple of beers. Had you been a big drinker at one time? No. Your mom and dad a big drinker? No, never. Okay. My father has never been in a bar in his life. He's a he's a hardworking man and a good family man. Uh, yeah, uh, being an alcoholic doesn't have anything to do with being a good or a bad yeah. person. It's just it's just uh, a genetic thing. And listen, you portrayed yourself as a hardworking professional man, and you're hooked on Vicodin. Right. You need to understand that the, these drugs, the oral opiates, are the, as addictive as heroin. It's the same disease. Uh -huh. And it requires comprehensive treatment in order to get over. How do you get them? Um, Let me get doctors to get them. Well, I was getting really? to a doctor. How come you don't get me anything? I and, gotta go get uh, my own then, stuff because I'm on to you. Is that what Brett Favre did? You can get. Brett Favre was getting them. Yeah. You can get. You can get doctors and you're like you I, go to you I was know getting them to a couple doctors. You get them from dentists and orthopedists and things. And you go and I'm complain of certain things and they give you an open-ended prescription. Perkins, like, yeah. Percocet and Percodan. Right, but Doug, this is a profound addiction, okay? And you're gonna you're going to lose a lot if you don't do something about this. The the only reasonable approach is a 12-step approach and a comprehensive treatment program. It's going to take a lot of work in order to get over this. Do you go to NA for this? NA would be a way to go, AA also, but he needs to go to a program. Uh, this I is went into a program a uh, year and a half ago, Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was, they, they treated you like a child. And uh, Did you finish the detox? Yeah, I finished the detox, and I was off for about six months. Okay. And uh, it will, it will, myself, because of the people that I know. It will always recur, Doug, no matter what. Hey, hey, the recidivism well, is a hundred percent. Do you know what? Do you know a doctor, Doug? Yeah, I do. And how how expensive is this? Oh, I everything's paid for hundred uh, percent. Your prescriptions and things. You yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You know, pays for that. Who? Uh, I don't know. I just want to say, you know. <laughs> do you know? Some, do you know? I think yeah, you and me. I think Somebody. I pay for that. No, no, it, it, uh, it's pooled. It's pooled risk. Shared risk. Right. But, Listen, Doug, please take this very seriously. This is a serious condition. You, you have so much to lose, and you're going to lose it all. I mean, what I was picking up on with him is his hostility. I don't know if you, it was sort of, a, sort of a repressed hostility that was sort of medicated. And uh, that's what the anger and hostility and, and issues of abandonment and powerlessness are just profound to people that get hooked on opiates. And then you've got to have that genetic predisposition we would call alcoholism in order to develop the actual addiction itself. This, this is as serious as if you're a heroin addict. It's going to have as many consequences. It may take longer to evolve, but it's just hard to treat. And just What's hard it to do to over. your body if you get on Vicodin? Well, opiates, interestingly, don't do as much as speed or cocaine or, oh, or even God. even marijuana. Uh, the, Ooh, they, uh, smarted. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, uh, but but the Tylenol in Vicodin can be quite dangerous. Cause people oh, there's take, Tylenol in Vicodin? Yeah, a lot of it. And uh, people take up to 50 or 100 tablets a day, and this can be liver toxic and shut your liver down. Drew doesn't like the term score, by the way, when I <laughs> ask him to uh, prescribe me some medication. You know, that's so could you go to your office and score me some, you know, fill in the blank? He doesn't like score. So are you real, you're a real doctor? It. Like yeah. real MD? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we should uh, listen. To what you're yeah. Saying. Yeah. Oh. You may have questions, like too. You can uh, feel free to ask during a commercial break. I I'll tell you, every, most um, performers and celebrities are hypochondriacs, I've found, especially the women. Really? A lot of female comedians, um, especially female comedians, they're they're kind of hypochondriacs. They have a lot of uh, problems, and they're they're always thinking about elective surgery. <laughs> right. So as soon as we go, as soon as the the mics get cold, and we go to a commercial. The questions are just uh, nonstop for Drew about the augmentation and uh, am, mm -hmm. am I right? I, but a lot of it's talking about all kinds of depression and a lot of depression. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just pee. All right. Well, speaking of peeing, yeah, I think uh, think I do that. You want to sell the next call, Drew? Mm. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> How to tell 18-year-old girlfriend's parents that he has a 3-year-old son. All right. That's that's yeah, that's, that's pretty I'm into that. Yeah, we can all get behind that. You have five seconds. Love. Stone and Trey Parker both here from... What? From, uh... Oh, she is. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, we didn't hear that. What did she say? And and don't talk at me. Right, I'm right in the middle of talking myself. It drives me insane. What did she say? Right, and don't apologize either when I tell you not to talk to me. When what did she I'm say? Middle of, uh, thinking. And, right, and don't say? apologize again when I what tell you not say? to apologize. Get on the air here. Victoria's in the movie. Oh, yeah. basketball. Oh, she yeah. She got in a hot yeah. tub naked with Matt. Yeah, I was in a hot tub naked with Victoria. Really? Yeah. He was. Was she naked? She was naked. Yeah, she was naked. And they were like making out. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Rough. That is so good. Yeah.
Yeah, that's yeah. what acting's all about. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all about. She had to man. act like she was all hot. Yeah. yeah I had to act stretch. like I was turned on. <laughs> yeah, you just closed your eyes and pictured like uh, Ruth Buzzy or something. <laughs> yeah, so Roseanne. She could, she could chub up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she's she's spectacular. I was just talking about her. I, I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday last week. We had her in here about a year ago. Yeah. Actually, this is all funny because we were just talking about Las Vegas during the commercial yeah. break and yeah. uh, Drew's birthday. And I was saying that we had Victoria in here the night before the morning I was supposed to leave for Vegas with my girlfriend. And she listened to the entire show, of, uh, you know, those pleas to pull up her top and what it must have right. been like to get her and her sister. I found out that one of the guys from the little the Swedish village she grew up in nailed her and her sister when they were both like uh, 16 and a half. That and I thought, rules. oh. Let's go find that guy and give him a medal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, he's not hard to find. He's, he's the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got elected to that position. Yeah, yeah. He's held it he's got my for vote. 15 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I, you know, she goes out with a guy who works on Entertainment Tonight. Yeah. One of the reporters on Entertainment Tonight. We like giving him crap. No, uh, she needs two or three men, though. You, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's, she's a big girl. big, yeah. she's beautiful, and if she grew up in L.A., she'd probably be ruined by now, but she's got that great um, uh, sort of zest for life and, and that great accent. I don't know if she's stupid or not, but you can't tell because she has that great accent. Oh, no, she's like Brainiac. Yeah. We were, so we were awesome. talking quantum physics with her all the time yeah. on set. Wow. She's a genius. So she was a snake in the tub. and, and Talking quantum physics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is spectacular. Hell of a woman. Mike. Yeah. You're 21. Yes, I am. What's going on? Um, <clears throat> back in January, I just recently got divorced, and uh, I have a three-year-old son. And uh, since then, about two and a half, three months ago, I met this girl. And we've been seeing each other pretty exclusively since then. Um, she's only 18, and she still lives with her parents. She's starting college next year. And I haven't quite gotten around to telling her parents about my ex-wife and my three-year-old son. And I think really highly of them, and I think they think really highly of me, and I don't want them to think any less of me. So They know you were married before? No, they don't know any of that. It just well, come up in conversation. I guess the question is... How much what's time are you spending with her folks, though? Quite a bit, actually. I go up to her house, like, every weekend, some during the week, a little bit. And it's been three months you've been with this girl? Yeah, about about three months. The question is, what is the right time to... to? I say never. I just say yeah. keep lying. Yeah. Just He's keep not, yeah, are you already lying? committed to lying. Are you lying? With it. No, I'm not lying. They, just, haven't really, they haven't asked me. You it just, just not, hasn't come up. You're not disclosing, that's all. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you think you're going to marry this woman? No, I sure don't. In fact, <laughs> I mean, we're we're pretty exclusive, you know. I, I uh, call her my girlfriend, but, you know, I'm, I was married for two and a half years, and I got married real young, and I, I'm not really into... You're not going to make that mistake again? No. So why is not. this important information for the parents? I would think this would be... Does your girlfriend know about it? Yeah. All right. That, she's the only one that needs to know. She's an adult. None of yeah. the parents need to know. Is she going to move out of the house soon? Well, she's uh, she's going to college nearby for the next two years, and after that, she's going she's leaving town. Mm. Mm. She going to junior college? Um, I guess so. Yeah, that ain't going to be two years, brother. <laughs> she's going to be living at home in uh, seven, eight years on the average, and that's just the first semester. I think so. Believe me, nobody goes to junior college. I would love to have videotape of every uh, stoner in my high school I talked to who said, "I'm going to go to Valley Junior College or down to Pierce. I'll go there for two years." Then I'm transferring to, to Harvard, Berkeley yeah, to or Harvard. Harvard. MIT. <laughs> Brown. Yeah. yeah. Now fast forward now fast forward seventeen years later. Yeah, they're yeah. still roaming the halls of peers. <laughs> yep. Now, nobody gets out of junior college in two years. You could get out of junior college in two years if it was a one week program. <laughs> you see? But if the two year program's actually two years, then it's seventeen years. <laughs> so you gotta do the math. All right. And well, I don't understand uh, Mike anyway because he's he's he seems like he's seeing other people or he's not planning on being real exclusive with right. this girl. Like, who cares about the parents anyway? Yeah. I mean, take him on Jerry Springer. Well, yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, you don't like Jerry Springer? I got the script for the Jerry Springer movie, Drew. No. <laughs> yes, they wanted me to uh, audition for a uh, part. Guess what? Trailer trash. One of the guys. They want you to be a trailer trash? <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. A stretch. Shocking. Yeah, I didn't go. I didn't do it. Movie, yeah, Jerry Springer the movie, yeah, it's gonna it's like be great. Spice World, it's it's like, and it's not, and it's like a full on, uh. it's like private parts, only it's supposed to be from the perspective of people that went on his show. 
Yeah, but here's the problem. These movies... Well, if they were realistic, it'd be very interesting, because oh, yeah. you see the misery... No, but they're trying from. to turn it into a whacked-out comedy. Yeah, there you go. But the, the movie's going to come out in a year, and Jerry Springer will have cold, cooled off six months ago. Yeah. It, it'll be like Super Mario Brothers, the yeah. movie. It comes yeah, out right. five years yeah. after the kids stop playing the right, game, right, and then everyone are like, right. well, what the hell are they thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hollywood, it's kind of a catch-22, because things only stay hot for so long. Yeah. So by the time someone figures out uh, let's make a movie, let's write a script, let's get the funding together. And, you know, it's six months before the thing comes out. Oftentimes, whatever the topic of the movie yeah. was is it's long since gone. gone. Exactly. That's why we're not doing a Love Line movie, because uh, this yeah. is it, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it comes out tomorrow, we're screwed. Katie. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. Uh, Turn your radio down. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Um... Yeah, I'm 15, and I... Uh, oh, well, your radio's not turned down, Katie. Okay, my, me and my boyfriend, I have herpes, and I want to know if it's okay if we use whipped cream. It could activate your herpes. It could? Mm -hmm. it, anything that irritates... How about a non-dairy thing, like Cool Whip? Anything that activates, uh, that irritates that area can activate herpes, and anything that changes sort of the environment can activate a vaginal infection, like a vaginitis, yeast... But Those herpes and whipped cream goes together really well. Yeah, yeah it's like baseball and apple pie. <laughs> it's kind of like chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah. Reese's, you know. Can you imagine Whoops. the commercial? <laughs> yeah. The Whoops. One guy's rollerblading. Yeah. Yeah. Whipped hey, cream. you got your whipped cream on my herpes. <laughs> no, you got your herpes what? on my whipped cream. What do you mean by activate herpes? I didn't know herpes got activated. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, I'm getting curious. Well, for instance, uh, cold sores get activated by the sun, right? That's a photo-activated herpes. <clears throat> but what happens to activating it? Does it Irrita you? Irritate the skin, it'll, it'll, the, a rash will appear. Oh. Mm -hmm. Katie? Yeah? Is your radio turned down? Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, you want to gamble on Katie? Cause, no. Uh, God, there's got to be something up with her. Uh, What's going on with you, Katie? Well, what do you mean? Okay, how old's your boyfriend? He's 17. Mm-hmm. How long, when did you lose your virginity? When I was 13. Mm. Who was the guy? Um, no, no, who was the 19-year-old? <laughs> what? How old was the guy? Oh, he's 15. It's what? the same guy. Same really? Guy. Okay. Yeah. See, it's nothing going on here. Mm, what about before that? Before that? She, yeah. Like nothing. She's not happy, but she's also not what we're used to hearing from. She's not? Where's your dad? Um, He's not home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that kind of concrete thinking <laughs> we have on this show, though. <laughs> You know, it's great. The great, the greatest thing is, is when we get someone with an accent or we get someone with a bizarre name, and I go, oh, um, Kendufa, what kind of name is that? <laughs> it's my name. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Where, where are you from? Where are you from, Cleveland? County. <laughs> where are your folks from? Uh, the Ohio area. Okay. Where are their parents from? Uh, I don't know. Where are your people from? What color are you? Mm, brown. Okay. We're, we're, we're getting warmer now. Where... <laughs> It, it takes 20 <laughs> minutes to find out that uh, they come from uh, some some uh, Soviet republic. Hey, Katie? Yeah? Uh, you like your dad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? He doesn't drink and never did anything weird to you? No. Nobody ever touched you before this guy? No. Okay. Okay. What, Drew? Drew's got a feeling. No, forget it. No. <laughs> All right. So don't use the, uh, don't use the whipped cream? Okay. Uh, I, I'm just, you know, hey, Katie. same sex, Katie. You're going to transmit How, that. Uh, how bored with sex are you at 15? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, really, you just got to be bringing whipped cream into it yeah. already. Well, I, it's not so much they're bored. I they, just thought of whipped cream last week. I'm no, 27. When, when people that age start I'm doing... I'm just entering the Jimmy phase. <laughs> of the when, when people that age start doing that kind of thing, it's because they don't get anything out of sex because they don't have the capacity to achieve intimacy. They're not ready to be that physically involved. So they don't, they're not, particularly women are not gratified by it, so they're searching for reasons that they find in the uh, Cosmo which tell them to add food, and which is right, ridiculous right, things right, like that, right. rather than giving them uh, techniques to follow their own instincts into some real intimacy and some gratifying relationships. So. Like everything tastes better with whipped cream, so maybe sex would be better with whipped cream. I, um, you know, I never understood incorporating the food products, and I never really understood getting involved with a bunch of bizarre ritualistic stuff. My whole thing is, is if I wasn't enjoying sex, I needed bigger breasts and a, and a more petite woman. Right. Possibly of uh, Asian descent. Take notes, ladies. He's probably telling the truth. But I just figured I was bored with my partner. It's not like uh, Bo listen, bored with your how your partner looked, not with the partners, who the partner is. Uh, well, he, Mike, shut your mic. Well, with a woman, shut his mic off. I've had enough of him. This nonsense. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. talk shop. Can yeah. you believe that? <laughs> let's just talk us guys. <laughs>
talk to Joyce Wright. No, he's not. Who was that? Joyce Brothers? Oh. Dennis. Oh, hi. Hey, you're 15. Uh, yeah. Um, You're on with uh, Matt and Trey from uh, South Park. Oh, and, yeah, you uh, guys are awesome, man. Thank, you, are. Park is thank you very much. Best thing I've ever seen. Cool, thanks, man. And, um, well, oh, God, when I masturbate after my orgasm and everything, I get this pain in my penis and wondering what's up with that. <sighs> we'll have Mike again. Mm. Right. Could it, maybe you got a shard of melon rind <laughs> in there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember being That's 15. what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Getting the old cantaloupe out. Yeah. Heating yeah. it up in the microwave oven, cutting a hole in it. Wow, scary. They knew that spontaneously. Yeah, I was just kidding. But <laughs> the yeah, fact that you don't know it is weird. weird. I mean, yeah, I thought everyone, everyone knew that. Everyone does that. We're no, from Colorado. Yeah, that's better than a woman. Thing. You just put uh, some lipstick and a wig on the melon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. Put a hole in there. Yep. And uh, two pieces of coal for the eyes. That's <laughs> great. The carrot nose. It's like the Frosty song, but, yeah. but different. Don't put was, the hat on it. This was invented in uh, Colorado. Uh, Dennis, what kind of pain do you get? Is it an aching pain? It's like it's like a throbbing in throbbing. Me. And does it go into your like the pelvic area or does it stay in the penis? No, no, it's like in my actual penis. Are you kind of uh aggressive with yourself? I don't think so. Because if if you, you ever call yourself there, bitch and slap yourself on the <laughs> ass here, <laughs> right, I mean, no. fifty, <laughs> and you yell, "How often?" You know, I love it. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. <laughs> How often are you doing this? Uh, I don't know, a couple times a day. Yeah, I just just lighten up a little bit, okay? <laughs> no. that, that's what this is about. There, there are muscular spasms you can get. You can you can irritate the the lining of the urethra, and you can over. Uh, you can stretch the the uh, cavernous bodies that are filled with blood. That uh, they always snap direction. back. Believe me, yeah. they, they never stay back, stretched out. It, it, your body's telling you something that uh, it's it's too much. You know, it's great off. about fifteen year old guys. It's like, yeah, I got a problem. I have uh, excruciating pain when I masturbate. Okay, uh, how many times? Have you been? Four times a day. Yeah. How long's pain been going? Six years. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to cut down to three times, uh, perhaps. <laughs> Try that. Yeah. Yeah. Pain. The Wait, great thing is that if this this guy's probably, if you were playing tennis and your arm hurt, you just cut down on the tennis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. If, if the slightest hint of uh, corporal tunnel syndrome in the writing hand, and that'd be it. He'd, he'd be <laughs> staying home from school for a year, right? right. <laughs> but the penis, he's shooting, uh, he's shooting thunder out of the penis. Lightning bolts are coming out of his penis, and he's still at four times a day. All right, Drew. Yeah. You want to sell a call, and we'll go to break. Gabriel wants to know if he should tell his girlfriend that he's cheating. Okay. No, uh, it's no. bad. Let's right, go next, next call. <laughs> uh, obsessed with the girl. <laughs> no, we'll go talk to Gabriel. All right. The ball, which is out the thirty-first, which is this coming Friday, which is good because um, I'm trying to think of the other comedies that are out. Well, there's the one, uh, everything about Mary. Something, something, about, something Mary. about Mary. Yeah. It's supposed to be cool. It's yeah, supposed, supposed to be, be funny, yeah. but. It will have been out for maybe two or three weeks yeah. by the time baseball three, yeah. comes out and yeah. had died down. I mean, the people who, who wanted to go see it would have gone and seen right. it. Right. Mafia hasn't been getting great uh, reviews, so uh, that'll be done. Right. Mafia, yeah, I, I haven't. I haven't been racing out to see Mafia. I I, uh, I had a callback. I one of the few things I've ever had a callback on was uh, Mafia, except for it was for one word, and uh, that was a callback I didn't go back on. That's and the only everyone got Mr. pissed Sonso? off at. Yeah, yeah, my line for the audition was, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, So-and-so, some, uh, some Tyson name, yeah, yeah. Miss, Mr. Uh, DiGiacomo, and that's the line. And then they called me the next day and said, you got to call back. And I said, oh, for, for what, for that? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, I already did that. It was, well, come back. I said, no, I'm not coming back to do one line. <laughs> and then I delivered a great line, which uh, which you guys can use, but you're way, you're way too big. But I said, if you want to hear me do the line again, close your eyes and picture me doing it yesterday <laughs> when I was standing in your goddamn office. <laughs> and uh, that was it. And then they said... Uh, Who's the guy who made? Who's the guy who made that? It was the Zucker <laughs> and uh, Abrams. It was Abrams. They made which one? Uh, uh, Mafia. Yeah, it was just Jim Abrams. Abrams. Jim Abrams. Then they said Jim Abrams is a big fan. He wants to meet you. And I said, Oh, well, that's different. I love that guy's work. And I went in there and I sat down in his office and he said, uh, Which one are you, the doctor? <laughs> I said, All right. Or the hazards. <laughs> then I said, I am the hack. <laughs> I don't think he used the word hack. Though. <laughs> Gabriel. Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. What's going on? All right, look, I've been with this girl, right, for about five, six months. Hello? Yep, yeah, we're a listener. And Hold on, let's try that again. Gabriel? Yeah. You Tell us how long you've been with the girl. With a girl? This girl. Oh, this girl. 
five, six months. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's, that's incredible. Wow. Right. Yeah, what else? And then I met this other girl at a club. Mm-hmm. Ever heard of Club Heaven? Sure. Okay, I went there and I met her there. Oh. and No, I've known her for about two, three weeks. Uh-huh. And... You know, I, I you know I have sex with my girlfriend. When right. Then, How old is your girlfriend? Sixteen. Hmm. Yeah, that's fifteen, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's fifteen. Your girlfriend. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, I know I know the definite sixteen and the uh, she's fifteen. I'm going to say she's sixteen. Okay. S- sixteen. And Gabriel. Yeah. You're not using much protection when you have sex with her. Oh yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. You do. What are you doing? I don't want no kid right now. No. What are you doing? Well, what do you mean, what am I doing? How are you preventing a pregnancy? What do you mean? <laughs> what are you doing okay. to prevent <laughs> your girlfriend from getting that's, pregnant? Yeah, condom, right? Condom, oh, right. R- right. Oh, that's yeah. the right answer. <laughs> you in a new car. <laughs> if only. So, Gabe, what's the question? Okay, and, you know, I, I, you know, did it with this girl that I met. Yeah. And, right. you know, I, I really like my girlfriend. Right. Like, like her enough to... Uh, up banging chicks you meet at the club? Yeah. That's okay. cool, man. You're 17. Have sex with them all. Well, but not. it's not cool to your girlfriend, so you got to yeah. end that relationship before you do anything like that. Yeah, because, you know, I really like her a lot. Right. Mm, you're not You're not That's treating clear. her respectfully. and Yeah, it's not clear that you like her. You're in a place in your life where you can treat her right. Mm-hmm. you, know, you got to end that. Yeah. And that feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know you you I don't think you have to end it. You can just say... Hey, I'm gonna have sex with another girl, and but don't worry, that's cool. Yeah, but don't worry, it's the '90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm way, only 17. And the way women are being encouraged to behave these days, they're sort of they swallow that down and take it. Yeah, yeah, swallow it on down, which is terrible for them. But yeah, they you know. never swallowed anything down when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember that. Oh, it would break your heart if you heard about all the oral sex that was going on with 15 and 16 year olds. I mean, I I spent the better part of my adult life wondering what it would feel like to have a, a mouth on my penis. I mean, you know, outside the family. I mean, I really, I, I, I had that. I, I, I couldn't imagine getting a BJ when I was 14 or 15 like half of our callers do. I don't even know what it was until I was about 14 or 15. Mm-hmm. Did you did you guys lose your virginity in uh, in high school? I was 16. 16? Man. Yeah, I was around 16. I can't remember exactly. Obviously, wasn't that remarkable. <laughs> Was, I think it was sixteen. Did you have relationships with, uh, with the girl, man? Yeah. Uh, Trey? Whoever. I did, I did yeah. Yeah. They did. Short lived. Right. I thought but, I was. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Drew? How about you? You lost. Uh, uh, I seem kind of bitter about something there. Yeah. There's a lot of it's just my on air persona. <laughs> really pretty. I had a relationship with an electric toothbrush from the age of 16 to 21. Uh, uh, it was a cantaloupe. pretty short lived affair, Drew, because the batteries ran out on her. Recurrent relationship. <laughs> Great penis hygiene, though. Steven. Hi. What's going on? You're 27. Yeah. Can't believe I got through it. <laughs> um. So, for a long time caller, or a long time, right. listener, first time, okay. all that crap. Um, well, um, I, I should start off by saying that ever since uh, after graduating high school, I've been getting increasingly and increasingly more um, depressed. Hmm. Um, there have been a couple of times that I did try to commit suicide. A couple of times? Yeah. Um, Were you hospitalized for those episodes? The second time I was, because mm-hmm. I got really sick. You know, I'm not a violent person, so I pretty much stuck to pills, you know. Um, no, but I mean, did you have a psychiatric hospitalization yeah. after the, after you were medically stabilized? Yeah. Um, don't you, don't, the don't they have to do that if you try to well, commit suicide? If, if, you, if you get into the system. I mean, if you just recovered at home or something. Oh, you know no, no. I, I, I had um, caused pretty severe liver damage. You took a bunch of Tylenol? Uh, barbiturates, mm. sleeping pills, okay. and alcohol combined. All right. With Pepto Bismol because I knew I would throw it up, okay. but that didn't. You know that didn't. Wow, happen. that's kind of diabolical. I yeah, that. does that <laughs> work, bro? Scheming. You any, it no. didn't work. No. I just throw no. it up. No. 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 You got any, did you get any rashes from the barbs? Uh, no, no. no. All right, what's the question then? Um, also, um, well, I guess it's more along these lines, as far as um, relationships and sexual relationships go. Um, I've always been kind of socially anxious, uh-huh. hard, you know, making friends, keeping friends. Um, also, increasingly, you know, in the past few years, it's becoming harder and harder for me to um, go out in public, um, 
deal are, with people. Are you hearing voices or anything like that? No, nothing, nothing that extreme. Are you, have you been given a diagnosis? <clears throat> um, when I was a kid, um, they, the diagnosis was emotionally, um, well, it, was, it wasn't emotionally disturbed. It was underdeveloped, I think. And what, what was it when you were in the psychiatric hospital? Um, depression, social anxiety, mostly depression. And? Um, and what? Well, there's also um, bizarre, um, like, I've never really had a, a, a relationship with a female. Um, I, I've always had somewhat bisexual tendencies. Were you sexually abused when you were younger? See, I, I don't think I was. I mean, I don't remember anything like that. Okay. But um, there's a lot about my past I don't remember. Because? Clearly. Why? Um, I'm not. I'm not even sure. Were you with your parents all the way along? Are we in a foster family? Or? My uh, my mom has been with me the whole time. What happened to your dad? Um, my father, I never knew. Um, he and my mom divorced when probably when I was one. And what happened when the year that he was there? Uh, oh, I really have no idea. And, I know nothing about him okay. other than. All right. All right. So what? What's your question? Um. I'm wondering, see, I, I know Drew is really good at, at pinpointing things. All right, just give us a question. Please, it's Sunday night. I'm, I'm this close to killing myself on Sunday night anyway. Do you understand, Stephen? I don't yeah. mean to be cruel, but you've you got to spit it out, because uh, the boys are on a very uh, vigorous uh, schedule here, and uh, they're really starting to get bored and upset now. Ironically enough, they picked the call. You see what happens when you when, when you let the layman <laughs> yeah, pick through. We won't. That'll be the last time we do that. Never yeah. let that happen again. We really got screwed with that one. All right, Stephen, please ask us your question. Okay, I'm I'm wondering um, exactly why it is that I would have the um, the sexual fantasies that I do and the trouble that I have um, dealing um, socially with people on a day to day basis. Um, sexually, I I'm obsessed with masochistic fantasies. Yeah. Of humiliation of myself being All right. humiliated. All right. Uh, let me just, just in broad strokes, just say that something you, you, hmm, oh boy, that I can't tell for sure exactly what your sexual identity is or what has impacted on it, but clearly there's some significant issues about who you are and who you are sexually. There yeah. are clearly some issues of violence and physical abuse. That something probably happened to you that sort of hardwired these issues into your, into the sexual content of your thinking. There, there is something there. that I should definitely bring up to you, and between the stepfather that I have now, that my mother's currently... Oh, yeah. Married, there was one that beat you. No, no, but he was violent. Okay, I don't all right. remember so, him ever laying a hand right, on me. All right, but that, that was enough to put that material, you know, in, in, in insert that stuff at an important developmental time. And you clearly have social phobias. Now, whether that social phobia is part of a more significant or general personality disorder, I can't answer that in a couple of minutes on the radio. Why does everything come out in one's sexuality, though? You know what I mean? Like, when you, when you get, like, a four- or five-year-old and you start screwing around with them, whether you're, you're violent or verbally abusive, whatever it is, it always manifests itself in some sort of, uh, in some sort of bizarre sexual ritualistic act when they get older i mean how come everything turns to sex a guy you know guy can go to work guy can have his buddies guy can do whatever it is a guy does but it it comes out in the relationships and in the yeah. sex yeah every time I, i've even tried to ask him or answer a more general question is what is it why would evolution insert that it seems counterproductive mm -hmm. you know something bad happens to you you think you, the child would learn to avoid that sort of stuff instead of acting it out again and again well, so I'm as I said, it, it works that way when it comes to things like um, uh, almost drowning in a pool. The kid doesn't want to get near water, getting bitten by a dog. The kid doesn't want to go near dogs. But when the kid gets molested by his weird uncle, then he hooks up with some abuser and, and or I, gets into something I, I weird. I suspect it's more general than I suspect you get bitten by a dog when you're two, you want to be a dog trainer. You get bitten by a dog when you're nine, you avoid dogs. Interesting. I'm tripping out. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Sunday night, man. Hey, I'm never up this late. Let's talk about me for just a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's do. He wants a job. You guys are on the way up. There's no doubt about We're that. We're up. We're up, dude. And We're on the top, ready for the fall. You got, I'm sure there's a, many projects uh, that are uh, on the drawing board and probably uh, some you're working on as, as we speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm hungry, man. Mm. You I want mean, a part? Yeah. You want a bone? Yeah. yeah. Can you throw me one? Uh, no. Can't <laughs> do that. Try? Can you? How about a uh, no. stand-in gig? 
Yeah, you, you know. can be my stand-in. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I with enough coaxing, I think we Actually, yeah, can get the right. hair to go. The hair's about right. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I'm just saying, we've had other filmmakers on this show, and I've asked them for a part, and they've thrown me a bone, and I'm just really? saying... Wow, that's really cool. You know, that'd be cool. Yeah, they're, aren't they they're, cool? They're cool guys. These guys aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Drew. They're on my list now. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, you, too. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. And the triplets. Uh. Yes, they're on the list. Okay. We'll be back. I feel so... Matt Stone and Trey Parker are both here from South Park in Basketball, which is out the 31st of July. That is coming up this Friday. And... Um, I'll be in nothing coming up this Friday. He's rubbing it in. Phone number. <laughs> no. Do you do the no. break? Ten second break? Yeah. No. Should we do that? Yeah. Okay. We'll do a little ten second station identification. We'll be right back. This is Loveline on Radio Station. KROQ FM, Pasadena, Los Angeles. The world famous K Rock. It is Loveline. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Basketball's the movie. Matt and Trey are the guys who... Well, you guys didn't write it. You just... No, 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 just no, no. We're actors. stars. We're actors. Actors. Did you... Actors. How, how much, though, did you... Um, how, um, how married to the script were you when you guys were doing dialogue? Oh, yeah. very little. Yeah, yeah we, when we'd show up, the, the script was just a blueprint for, like, this is the scene we're doing this but day. It was cool, because we learned from Dave, uh, David Zucker, the guy that directed it, you know, he said, and the way they did Airplane and Naked Gun, they would just have the page for the day and be like, well, this sort of do this, you know, but then he would, he'll change stuff, and the other writers would change stuff. Nobody well, helps right. people all, every Sunday. No. Sunday through Thursday. That's right. Charlotte. Yeah? 17. Um, yeah, I was wondering if it was normal for girls to have, like, on, like, a continuous discharge like all the time it can be uh, well what would it look like well uh, it's different for different people i mean sometimes it's, it's thick and brownish sometimes not sometimes it gets worse just before your period sometimes it's all the time really uh, are you sexually Jeez. active yeah well it may be able to change in your discharge you certainly want to get that looked into and if you're sexually active in any event, you want to be sure to have pelvic exams regularly because that puts you at slightly increased risk for cervical cancer. Who has a discharge all the time, though? Some people do. Matt's mom. Nope. Matt's nope. mom does. Oh, I need to bring in my mom. <laughs> What's that, Charlotte? I've had mine since I was 11. Yeah, when you start having your periods. When well, you, I when didn't that... get my period until I was almost 13. <laughs> Were you sexually active at 11? No, I wasn't. Okay. I was molested when I was 6. Okay, so it's mm. worth, it's worth that, that would... In, that would be consistent yeah. with sexual activity, right? Who, who molested you? Um, it was a friend of my mother's. Mm. Mm. Moms. It was, it was a boyfriend of your mother's, right? Mm, I don't think so, because, well, we were like, no, it was her friend. It was a friend of the boyfriend's. Oh, friend of the boyfriend. Oh, yeah. 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 Our, our, our moms uh, on this show are, are, are um, just uh, uncanny about picking out uh, vermin and bringing them back into the chicken coop and letting them, and then they let them alone. With the kids. Yeah, they go Bizarre. They go out uh, over to the um, Indian reservation, do a little gambling for the night, and then leave them alone with these guys. Oh, did you ever tell anybody? No, I didn't. Have you ever had a pelvic exam? Yeah, when I was 11, I let my dad know about the discharge, and he took me to the gynecologist. Uh-huh. And that's the first and last time I went. All right, we well, need to get back, all right? Get again, check, make sure it's just part of your normal physiology. It can be normal, okay? Mm, okay. But Did you're sexually active, so you've got to get pelvic hey. at least yearly. Uh, have you been pregnant? No. Huh? I don't think so. All right, you using protection? No. Yeah, you should do that, don't you think? Yeah. Do you want to get pregnant? No. Do you understand that you will if you don't use protection? Yeah, I understand that I will. Okay. Don't forget about the morning after pill, too. If well, I thought that was only offered to, like, rape, rape victims or something. No. All you have to do is go to your doctor and ask for it, or go to an emergency room, or go to a health care clinic and ask for the morning or emergency contraception. You have three days to get that after sexual intercourse. How old's your genius boyfriend doing? Mine? Yeah. I don't have one. Well, who are you being sexually active with? Well, last time was just, like, a close friend of mine. Uh-huh. Okay. Use protection, would you, Charlotte? Yeah. Please? Mm-hmm. All right. I didn't know that was regular discharge. Yeah, yeah. That, some women. Uh, yeah. That's not cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. God, now I can't sleep. I've only seen that with Matt's mom. I've never seen that. <laughs> Jeez. 
Paul. <laughs> Hello. I just, you know, we don't make enough mom or Pollock jokes anymore. I think we need to... Let's this bring was, the mom back. This is a better country when uh, people people were talking about Joe Mama and uh, and making a lot of Pollock jokes. Paul. All oh, right. Well, hey, Matt. <laughs> I'm going to get on a rip there, but forget it. Or, or what's up with your hair? What? What's up with your hair? Is that from your mom or uh, is that natural? Or how do you how do you care for your hair? That's a wig, dude. A what? That's a wig. That's really? not my real hair. Wow, right on. You think that's my real hair? Well, it could be. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man. Of course it's not. <laughs> my hair looked that stupid. Matt's bald. <laughs> and before he shaved his head, he looked like Tom Petty. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Right well, on. Paul. Hey, Drew, no. um, I'm wondering. I am uh, really, really successful to uh, Poison Oak. Yeah. And I got Poison Oak around the same time that I had a sexual encounter with a woman. Um, and I understand that HPV can be transmittable um, because of, well, even if you're using some type of protection, it can be transmittable that way. Yeah. Um, I did end up getting Poison Oak, and I had um, some type of raised lesions in my genital area, although it wasn't actually on my penis. So I'm wondering if that is a possible HPV infection and if there's anything I can do to... F it is possible. Uh, that, that's warts, everybody, HPV. Yeah. Right. You need to have a doctor look at it. It could be just something related to the poison ivy, poison oak outbreak. Now, I, I did actually ask my uh, general practitioner about it. Yeah. And he said, according to my history and everything, that it wasn't anything um, that he would say that it could be checked. But I've only been seeing... Did he look at it? He did not actually look at it. You have to it. look at it. Somebody okay. has to see it. The, the other thing is something called, uh, oh, I'm blanking the name of it. Well, why are you looking right. at me? <laughs> yeah. I know, porn stars and cars. Mm -hmm. That's all. Hey, Paul. Yo. Who was this uh, woman? Did she have, she had warts? Uh, no, not necessarily. Although I do know that she has had unprotected sex in the past because she has a kid. Okay. Cool. Oh, there you go. Good yeah. deduction. There. Paul's uh, quite a, a genius. Boy, we really, we, we, need, we need this kind of brain in the Pentagon over here. <laughs> well, the, the other thing, this could be something called molluscum contagiosum, which is a uh, little raised, little papule that occurs in the genital area where you're describing it. So we, somebody needs to look at it. These are all clinical diagnoses. Somebody were you humping her in the woods, Paul? Or is it no, just... but I do uh, mountain bikes, so that's how I get it. I, I've since started to always wear pants, so I don't get it anymore. Oh, I see. All right, where do you live? Uh, up in uh, Silicon Valley, San Francisco. Oh, that is so nice. Oh, All right. It it's beautiful. Enjoy your life. Well, one last thing for Trey. Okay. Is there any way that I can figure out what Kenny is actually saying? Uh, if we told you, they'd make us take it off the air. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Paul. It's good, though. Have a good night. Enjoy yeah, yourself. Bye. Josh. Yeah. You're 21. Right. Uh, I was. I, I had two questions that are kind of related. Uh, I was asking about... Uh, well, I guess I want to know what you guys think about, uh, what do you think is better, a, a good whiz or a good dump? <laughs> oh. Dude, that's such a ridiculous question because everyone knows it's a good dump. Yeah. yeah. A good well, dump is but, just... But I've asked a lot of girls, and a lot of girls would say a good whiz. They would say that's closer to orgasm. And good so that's whiz. Gonna... Are you a girl or a guy? I'm a guy. Oh, okay. Well, so it's, it's a good dump. Me. Yeah. If you're gay, though, it... Uh... Well, I don't think it has anything to do with your gay because I'm... Well guys like anal like i mean they like to dump whether they're gay or straight <laughs> yeah, <I'm saying laughs> if, 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 all the world loves it yeah, everybody yeah, does it helps so what i'm wondering probably for dr drew is uh what what's drew will the, not dignify the, this with an answer <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> guys, biological answer. reason for that because i mean guys like generally like anal stuff better i mean i like anal stuff better and i'm straight so you mean, you like, mean anal stuff well i mean you could you know you anal games to taking a dump or I mean... Heterosexual anal person. games. Well, what? see, uh, first off, <laughs> I've never taken a dump where I didn't take a whiz at the same time. Have you? But you you can take a little whiz uh, when you're taking a dump? Yeah, always, yeah, it always seems to be a little Maybe. whiz. Yeah. yeah, you whiz, but you know it's yeah, the there dump we go. that you the, really love. The, yeah, but the worst is when you're at a place where you don't want to take a dump, but you really got to take a whiz, but you could dump too, but yeah. you choose not to because you're like at the airport or something. Right. So you're standing at the stall and you're yeah. thinking, all right... I'm going to win. You got to clinch. And then all of a sudden, the dump, like, peeks his head, like, through the curtain, yeah. you know? like Dump's like, like, my turn. Yeah. It's like a little a, turtle coming out to see what's up the, in the uh, world. At the uh, <laughs> butt auditorium. It's yeah. like uh, they poke their head through it. And then you go, no, 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 no. I'm not going to. I'm just going to win. It's hard to shut down that muscle and open up the other. True? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Plus, you can drink your urine, but you cannot eat your feces unless... It's rolled in breadcrumbs or something. Drew, you can't eat your feces, can Roll you? Roll it in peanuts, make a little log. Little peanut That'll log. kill you, pecans. I well, I, I mean, I've heard from some people that it has something to do with the prostate, with 
that that makes it more enjoyable for right. men than women. Hey, Josh. Yeah. You got to get laid, buddy. <laughs> you really do. I, I've covered that base. There's more. Yeah. There's, there's more to life than <laughs> taking a dump. <laughs> that was your uh, sophomore year in high school, though. You well, need to get laid well, again. I, I moved on from there, and I've just I, I just want it's just no. a curiosity thing. It's like everybody I talk to, I always ask them. Right. That's why you're not getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that the first question you ask chicks, or you wait till like no, a third? No, no, I wait till after. <laughs> and the girls always say whiz. All right, Josh. Sort of orgasm. All right, Josh. Yeah. Just, uh, just start lifting weights and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's really best advice you'd give to that's a lot great. of guys. Yeah, it yeah. certainly couldn't hurt with the ladies. Yeah, yeah. Just start pumping iron. Stop thinking so much. And stop talking. Most guys, and uh, you guys are creative, you're funny. Um, Obviously. You probably, yeah. Yeah, listen to us. <laughs> we're, you, we're riot. You, but did you ever talk your way out of um, potential um, victims sexually or, or conquests sexually? I mean, did you, ever, did you find that, that talking wasn't the world's greatest um, aphrodisiac like when you're in high school? I'm actually pretty good at it. I'm pretty smooth. You are? Yeah. 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 See, I, w I always gab too much. Yeah, uh, I think I, I, I always, I can't ever realize that time when it's time to say, let's go in there. Yeah, like you know, the, I just keep on talking. The guys who got laid, they didn't talk too much. Yeah. They were kind of serious and they, they brooded. That was me. At, at the right time. Oh, really? And, yeah, and you look, you, you got to look sad. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you got to look like you're a little bit, you're sort of sad but pissed off. It's, like, the, it's the exact same face you gave your mom when you wanted the toy. <laughs> right. It's that face. And I, I learned it so well with my mom that when it came time for that, it, it it's the same face. It works perfectly. Right. Except for this time, the uh, the toy's hiding in her crotch. But it's the same. It's the same toy. It's the same principle. <laughs> <laughs> William. Hey. You're uh, 17. Time with your second time caller. Great. Okay, Trey and Matt, you guys rule. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I got a couple questions. Um, one, can you tell me what's up with the South Park movie? Uh, it'll be out next year. Yeah, like spring. Spring of '99. Animated or? It's gonna be animated. Oh yeah. Totally animated. We wouldn't go and live action. It'll be rated R. Yeah, it's rated R. Okay. Will Will it look the same? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the same, exactly it's the same, same damn thing. thing. Yeah, it's just more of it. <laughs> right, because he, it's interesting that uh, originally did you go that route just because of financial? Oh constraints? yeah, just because it was easy and because we out of laziness, no idea, really. And we just we don't know what the hell we're doing. But we now you could you could do it with the most technologically advanced oh, yeah. animation you wanted, but it would screw but it up. It for wouldn't everybody. be South Park. Yeah, yeah. it would be something else. Yeah. And also, could one of you guys do a little Cartman? Like, maybe make an answering machine message for me? <laughs> Jeez. Over the air. Can you do a little Cartman? Uh, Let's try. Try, yeah. Uh, okay, that's my puppy. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny is Trey does that voice, he, he like, becomes fat. <laughs> Suddenly, like, he it's on this body motion, body language. He has to dip his chin pretty yeah. good. <laughs> William? Yeah. All right, that's enough Cartman. Okay. I'm not. He's not going to do a phone machine. Anything you. wrong with the sex life there? No. No. Oh. All right. That's it. That's too bad. Yeah. All right. Adam, you rule. Thanks. Get in line now. All right. <laughs> For what? Whatever. The movie. <laughs> Just go. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Go. Go see basketball, and then you can go see South Park, the movie. Janine. Yes. You're 21. Yes. What's going on? I wanted to ask Dr. Drew. Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend is on Paxil. Mm-hmm. And he has a problem reaching orgasm. That's Paxil. Yeah, but I was wondering, we've kind of been wondering if there's, um, what kind of other me medication can either, like, counteract that, or... Yeah, the, the, the serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Paxil, Zoloft, Prozac, that whole class, except serazone. Uh, serazone does not do that, but that uh, other drugs in that class will cause inter disturbances of all phases of sexual arousal. Yeah. Decrease your libido, decrease erectile function, decrease orgasm function. All that can be disrupted but by he, these But he gets an erection, he just can't have an orgasm? Yeah, he Delight. can do everything fine, yeah. just can't There, There are oh, a many I'd different... i a killing spree inside three weeks. Many really different uh, things have been recommended. One is to reduce the dose of the Paxil. Yeah. The other is to add a medication called Wellbutrin. Uh -huh. uh, that's m mostly to increase libido. Yeah. And the other would be to switch to serazon. Those are sort of more common things. Other things like seroproheptidine and other medications have been advocated, but I don't think they're that mm. effective. Let's not rule out the uh, fluff girl. Yeah. I mean, in terms Fluffer. of... Fluffer. Yeah. yeah, just another. Well, you guys know just about another, that. Yeah. Just, just another girl. Just making a movie. Yeah. yeah. So well, Wellbutrin would be the thing to consider adding. Talk to his doctor to prescribe it. Is that okay for you, though? What? I mean, the fact that he, he can have an erection, but he can't have an orgasm? Um... Um, I wouldn't say it's okay with me. I'd like for him to have one, too. 
is it is his libido decreased as well? Not at all. Really? Yeah. This guy's a trooper. I, well, I had... I the had second I found out I couldn't have the orgasm, yeah, that'd yeah, be yeah, a first What am I? I don't, I don't think watch television. Yeah. Does he still perform oral sex on you? Oh, all the time. Oh, he deserves what a medal. What a good guy. Yeah, let's make a medal right now. <laughs> um, but uh, I had Give him a street. question. What he does is sometimes he'll go, like, if he doesn't take it for a couple days, then um, he can have an orgasm. But the thing is... Guess that, withdrawal. Does he spell? Yes, that's what Paxil that? withdrawal. He should absolutely not do that. Not do that? Yes, bad yeah, news. Really pa bad. Paxil withdrawal can be very uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. Why? So it can not happen an yeah, orgasm, you, really. But, right. but you can really get you know, very miserable. It's, it's this peculiar dizziness that people describe when they come up back, so it can be incapacitating. And it can get going, and it can be hard to break it. All right. So um, stay on it, and then uh, supplement it with more drugs. <laughs> Drew, you're in the back pocket of the uh, drug manufacturers, aren't you? No, I'm not. But that, Aren't you? No, I mean, that, that's... Honest. No, those are the, that, those are the alternatives. Stop the drug, reduce the drug, Wellbutrin, Sarazone, and then there's a whole s a sort of other category. <coughs> John. Yeah. You're 18. Yep. What's going on? Okay, um, well, I guess I could start by saying uh, I met this girl at my school last year. Um, it's only been a year that I've known her, and whenever I first met her, I started getting, like, a crush on her. And um, over the school year, I mean, at that time she had a boyfriend, but she broke up with him a couple months later. And she started going out with, like, one of my friends and before I could ask her out. And that happened about two or three more times. And over this time, I had started becoming obsessed with her. It's each time with one of her your friends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not good. Yeah, and it's rough. All over this time, I've become more and more obsessed over her. And just over the past couple months since um, school's let out, I've asked her out on a date a couple times, and she's turned me down. Yeah. And are it's you, just causing me to become even more obsessed. Are you going away with, to college? Uh, no, I'm taking a year off. Well, you need to go to Europe during that year or something. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe she can bang a few more of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, she'll go out with you. I, I could probably do it. Yeah. yeah. I'll hook Trey's up with a big star, so is uh, Matt. They could probably <laughs> it will help work you out. her over. But I've even gone... Hey, Trey, let him smell your fingers. <laughs> yeah, no problem. That's cool. I've even gone to the point of self-mutilation. I oh, boy. carved her name on my chest with a sharp piece of plastic. Do you think that's somehow going to increase the probability that she would go out with you? No, it just, at the point in time, I just, I don't know what came over me, but I did it. <laughs> well, sorry, is there, hopefully her name is something, it's not like, like Pam or yeah, something. Yeah, it's not like Fran, Francine Actually, or anything, no, right? Colette. Colette? Colette? Uh, yeah, that's like seven letters. Yeah, that's, that sucks, man. It's rough. I'll tell you, I would have done it with one L. Were yeah. you hot? I don't, I don't give a rat's ass how she, <laughs> <laughs> if she is two or not. I'm going one. John, pretty serious symptoms, right? Uh, yeah. You know? I don't know what to do. It's like, I don't know how to come, overcome my emotions over her. But, John, it's got nothing to do with her. I mean, you could be this nutty about anybody. Yeah, probably. It just yeah. happens to be her. It happens to be her. And uh, I would suggest you get treatment for this. This is, uh, this is getting out of control. I mean, you're going to end up either hurting yourself or stalking, getting a rat. I mean, God knows what that's you're going to do. That's what I feel like is one of those guys that are screaming right now. Well, that's, that's what's gonna, that, that is what these guys are, is what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, there is treatment for you. I don't know what your past has been that's uh, so significantly traumatized you, whether you're biologically having a problem. You're not on drugs or anything, are you? Um, no, I smoked weed for about six months, but I'm okay. out of that now. Okay. Well, you got to get back on the weed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's the problem, That's how the weed works. It's like, uh, let's see, I could carve this chick's uh, name <laughs> on my chest. I could smoke a bowl and hang out. Yeah. Or Knight Rider starting in <laughs> ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to watch Knight Rider. <laughs> Actually, I'll I think drunk. about it after. I was drunk when I did it, but... I still kind of knew what I did, was doing, so... Were you, did you grow up in an alcoholic family? No. Where's your mom? She's sleeping right now. Did, did she do you wrong some way? Oh, no. My, really? I've had a good family, like, my whole life. All I right. mean, my dad's never been there for me, but he left whenever I was two, so... All right, but other other than your dad being gone, the family was very good, very <laughs> oh, yeah, supportive. yeah, my stepdad, I love him to death, and he's been there for me all this time, and... Mm -hmm. All right, well, something's happening. Something, whether or not it's a psychological or purely a biological event, or both... Uh, something is going on now. This is an important time in your life. From 18 to 22 is a very tough dis uh, transition time. I wish and someone could have just put me in a coma between 18 and 22. Yeah, likewise. I, I really do. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could have got some. Um, yeah, I was. I had some like rich, uh, eccentric millionaire dad like Howard Hughes. I see that. Bought me. Yeah. Just either froze me or, or bought me a gurney and just fed me intravenously <laughs> and just put me put me under those little sleep cabins years. from like yeah. Alien or something. Yeah. Where you're yeah. just sitting there. Right. Yeah, it's years. the most miserable time of your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's when it's when a lot of these old issues uh, resurface and. Uh, you know, if you're biologically prone, they can be quite serious. And if there's sufficient trauma in your past, the, the sort of 
manifestations can be quite serious. And I, I really think uh, whether or not this is obsessive compulsive disorder or a thought disorder or something more significant, like some sort of personality disorder, or whatever it is, it needs treatment. There's medication that can settle this down, and there certainly is talk, talk therapy. The two would be quite effective. Do you remember obsessing over women, though? Oh, yeah. I mean, a certain girl who was Completely. in your high school. Oh, yeah. I Absolutely. obsessed over a girl uh, so hard, but... I think I think I turned it into pot. You know, I I got beyond it being a negative thing and got into like her being more like a muse. I was like, all right, you know, what? I'm never going to get this girl, but she's she's going to inspire me, and I'm going to make that cool. And like almost everything but I did, in a produ but yeah, in a productive everything I did way. creatively was like I in my mind I was like I'm doing this for her. But that's it, a great, it never that's turned a great, anything. It never turned that's anything. That's a great way to do it. Because she yeah. becomes an internalized symbol of something you want to achieve. No, so exactly. Right. And now I could probably get her, but I don't even want to because it would ruin it. Yeah, it would ruin yeah. them. Yeah, it's like meeting your favorite star or whatever. You meet him and you go, "Ah, oh, you're kind of lame." Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. 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 Hey, did uh, did you see her? At, you, you just went to your reunion, yeah. right? Yeah. You, was she there? Yeah. She looked good. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> So it was great. So now I'm going to be more talk creative to for a while. Did you, did, did you even talk to her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to start some sort of exchange program where, um, like, I don't get to hump the girl that I obsessed over in, in high but school, trade, but huh? I get to hump Trey's. Yeah. And Trey would, like, get to hump the girl I was obsessed well, over. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's, Let's do that. Let's do it. Can we do that? thing for guys to have that sort of thing in that sort of 13 to 18 mm -hmm. bracket. Does she yeah. know that she was that person? Oh, yeah. No, we were actually even engaged at one point. Oh, yeah, so she's Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and man. then what happened, Trey? Uh, let's not get into it. But, but I mean, what, what's cool is that... Engage in you know, your mind? or yeah, No, no, no. We really were. Oh, but, okay. but I mean, you know, it was a very negative thing for a while. And it was, I felt like, you know, for a while that I was like, you know, it was, it was I, could, I could see it becoming negative And like, okay, this isn't healthy how much I'm, I'm obsess obsessing over this woman. But, but then I, I did consciously turn it into, I don't even want her. Because I, I, you don't want her. You want this ideal right. of, you That's know, right. it's not right. the girl, it's it's the ideal it's the projection. Of, of, yeah, this perfect yeah. thing yes. that you'll never have. Yeah, I was so. screwed up over a girl, and I went to Spain. I just saved up my money, and I was, I'm going, as for, like you say, go to Europe. Yeah. I, I actually did that. Really? It helped a lot, yeah. yeah. I just was like, I had to get out of the country. I did that, but I went to Van Nuys. Because yeah. I just couldn't. Well, that's that's like that's a lot like Spain. We don't talk about. You know, oh we, yes, we do exotic. A lot of talking. Oh, the culture. <laughs> oh. Take a little siesta there in Van. It's Nuys. more than just the courthouse there. A lot of but people don't a, know that. This is a common thing guys go through. Health. I mean, quasi healthy guys. Right. Right. Develop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's funny, Drew. Thanks, Even man. that Thanks. you include yourself into that group. But yes, you go from completely obsessed to now. My point is, is I got to I got to jumpstart myself yeah. when it comes to women. Right. I mean, I've had a girlfriend for two and a half <laughs> years. I'm glad to see her, but if a week goes by and I don't see her, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll you notice. Make it. Oh yeah, I don't oh see yes, her yeah. And uh, if there's got to be a healthy balance somewhere, you know what I mean. If if you're if well, you're lackluster and lethargic at 34 and you're uh, amazingly obsessed at 18, I'm guessing 26 and I'm a half. I'm 27 right now, so I'm pretty healthy so right pretty now. Pretty healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm heading but, your direction. But people theorize that, that creativity, the creative solution to these things, is one of the things humans have at their disposal. And yeah, you, you gave a great example of that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, when you're in a tub with um, uh, Victoria Silvestad, it does take it makes the edge it. It off. all goes away. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It, it happened. Yeah. It was least, blank for a couple days. At least for that yeah. hour and the uh, in the half hour you get in in your hotel room when you get back. Okay. <laughs> Not that she was with you. We'll be back. This is Love Line. Anyways, Matt Stone and Trey Parker are both here. You know him from South Park and basketball, which is out coming this Friday. July 31st, and uh, that'll be everywhere all at once, right? Yeah, yeah, everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Big, yeah, big release. <sighs> you guys, uh, you get a piece of the uh, South Park merchandising, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you're good. We're, We're doing all right. You don't have to work anymore, right? Not do, really. Do you want to work? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. are we working? We we do we still do the show. I mean, it's really Matt and I, we write every episode. So right. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's really like, you know, I think that's why, I mean, most, most TV shows today are done by committee. And that's right. why they all kind of sound alike. So, right. you know, South Park, good or bad, is just pretty much me and Trey. <laughs> and do you, We do didn't you... make any money doing baseball, though. No, we certainly didn't. Because we did those contracts again before South Park took off. Yeah. Like, so We were no so we were nobodies, and it was like, hey, we're going to put you in a movie, and you're going to get $10 for it. And we're like, okay. Ten dollars. Wow. Yeah, but the, were your were your people able to you know get in and talk about some sort of video sales or something like that, like add uh, um, an amendment to the contract no, or something like baseball? that, where you could make some money no, on nope. the back end? We sign nope. the deal, you know. <laughs> nope. We have contracts. You do what we say. Yeah. Oh, it's horrid. Yeah. You're the man. Of the you know what that is. Yeah, you know actually, what those are. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but yours don't involve uh, the reach around like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true half. We actually have sodomy. 
Yeah, it's a whole page just dedicated to it. There's a, there's a hole in the middle. <laughs> Marco. Yeah, how's it going, Adam? You're 18. What's going on? Not so much. I have a question for the guys. Us? And Trey. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I was wondering, um, how how is it different from being from the big screen, especially around Jenny McCarthy? I don't know how you did it, man. And plus, I was wondering, how is it different from being from the big screen to South Park? Has it changed? I mean, from the acting... It, they're, they're two like uh, they're two completely different things. I mean, yeah. putting an episode of South Park together is like you know it takes tons of weeks and it gets like you know. But the the thing is that uh, you know act it was just an acting gig, so it wasn't like this. You know, with South Park we've got to do everything, and and with basketball it was just like hang out and make out with Yasmin Bleeth and Jenny McCarthy. Yeah, show up and eat lots of lobster on Friday. Yeah. But but being creative guys and y y being in a position where you're in total control of a project. Weren't there many lines and many scenes that you wanted to that you immediately had to get your 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 stink all over? Yeah, definitely. But but on the other hand, you know, it's like it it wasn't our movie, you know, and so when right. it's like the whole idea wasn't ours and the whole structure of it wasn't ours. So it, it was like we couldn't get too invested in it because you know we would if it was our movie, it'd be totally different. It would be a totally different movie. But you know what I I think, and uh, I may be wrong, but I think uh, the perception is is that you guys are involved with this movie because you're known as creators oh and because they more put than South you know all over the all yeah over the but, posters. right but you would just using logic you would say these guys are creators more than they're actors right, so right. here they are and in this movie yeah. they must right. have co-written it right. you'll see when you see the movie that obviously we are more something than actors <laughs> we have more everything than actors <laughs> yeah. marco uh, yeah um are you guys planning to do any uh other movies in the future by any chance well, yeah, hopefully, we're only I mean, 27. We, we, we owe a few to, uh, to Paramount, so we're going to do the South Park movie and then just sort of see if, if we're still around after that. Yeah. But but you know, is it a multi-deal, multi-movie yeah, yeah, deal? it's like yeah. a three-picture thing. Yeah. All, all South Park pictures or whatever no, you want? No, one, no, one no. South Park one picture South Park. and the rest are live action. Wh and whatever you want? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Super Mario Brothers too. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. Uh, either yeah, either our DC Cab. DC too. Cab too. That's oh, what yeah. we're gonna no, do. One, no one ever made DC. Love Cab DC Cab. Too. Love it. With uh, Mr. T. Yeah. Mr. T was in it. Yeah. Yeah. It was Great high. movie. Do. Uh, but what I was saying right when we uh, came back from the commercial is is, you know, there's some people that are sort of, they have to perform. They have to dance. I mean, they just have to do it. Otherwise, you know, when I picture like Joan Rivers, I realize that this isn't a crazy woman that needs to be in front of an audience at all times. You've discovered Hasselhoff has to uh, produce also. Right. <laughs> I had a funny conversation with uh, somebody from Baywatch. Alexander Paul. Alexander Paul was on the show. And uh, I said, listen, this Hasselhoff is a part owner in the most successful show in TV history. The guy's got money coming up the, out the wazoo. Why does he keep working? And she said, well, you know, for the art. I mean, he's a creator. And I said, <laughs> listen, this bastard did uh, Baywatch Nights where Susquatch was chasing some guy underneath a pier, for Christ's sake. Don't think That's I didn't sweet. see the Baywatch episode with El Gigantor, the, <laughs> the Mexican wrestler who made, uh, his love was making art uh, pelicans out of driftwood, for Christ's sake. Wow. Uh, please. That's heavy. But now, here's what I'm asking, though. If you guys, in, in, and you're already in this position, but could you see yourself just hanging it up in four or five years and just doing you know, what you wanted to do every day and not being on the set and not having deadlines? Oh, well, I mean, we're no, because with South Park, it, it's perfect because we we don't have to be in front of the camera, and, and you know, we're, we're better I think behind the camera than we are in front of it, <laughs> and, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it it's South Park. We just love doing it. It's not like we're not even remotely burning out yet on it. Yeah, so, I right. mean sometimes it's like it feels like we've been doing this for years, but that's like five or six years. It feels like we do the same thing we did five or six years ago. Now we just get paid tons of money. Yeah, but right. we, before we didn't make any money, and I think that if but we made stupid little movies anyway, you know, yeah. even when right, no one was just because it's fun. Because what else am I going to do? We just go get drunk, and that's yeah. you know that's fun for about a day and a half. Yeah, I mean, I know you, you're creative people, and you have to keep those juices flowing. But I, I always just thought there's some people that have to perform, and then some people that do it because uh, they want the money. Mm. And I always mm. figured the ones who did it because they wanted money would just get out when they had enough of that. Drew can't do that. I just don't. Th I just don't think you'd make it very far if that's why you started doing mm. it. I don't know. Yeah, if there's a balloon over Adam's head. It says, "I wish you guys get out of the way so I can some, leave some room for me when I uh, right. get my creative juices going." <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have them when uh, I sober up. <laughs> Kelly, stop the drinking. Yeah. You're 19. Uh-huh. What's going on? Oh, okay. Like, I, I had an abortion in, in March, and ever since then, I've been, like, losing a lot of hair. Like, uh, that is called telogenofluvian, and what that is is uh, happens after pregnancy or with hormonal changes and sometimes with significant emotional distress, where all your, your hair has a normal life cycle where each hair follicle 
lives and dies in a normal cycle where the hair will fall out every so often. And something like a pregnancy, all your hair will time together, all fall out together, and then come back together. And so it, you'll, you'll lose hair for a few months, and then it'll all start coming back in. Okay. People don't go bald that way, okay? You can get pretty thin, but it, it will come back. But your, your crotch will look like a dwarf's beard, just, right? Just on your head, this, the, on your head. Yeah, it never works. The hair never falls out where no, it should. No, not, not for these kinds of problems. can. Yeah, it falls out of your head, lands right on the crotch. It stays there. If your adrenal glands shut down, things like that. Can oh, really? Yeah. Kelly? Yeah. Well, is the hair only coming out of your head? Yeah. Yeah. How, how much is it coming out of? It's like mm -hmm. a handful. Like, yeah. every time I brush it. Yeah. You have a lot of hair, though, right? Not really. No. No. Well, mm. you, you will not go bald. It will get thin. And if it really, if it, if you get patches of, of complete baldness, uh -huh. see a dermatologist. Because I went to, the, like, after I started noticing, I went to the doctors and I asked them about it. And they said that they've heard of that happening after a pregnancy. But no one's ever, like, they've never heard of anyone having it after they had the abortion. Mm, uh, I, it's common after pregnancy. I I bet you it's, I, I don't know that for a fact, because I've not seen it after abortion, but I would expect to see it after abortion. I'm no MD, Drew, but wouldn't you say this is God punishing her for having no, the abortion? No, no, no. But it is sometimes the, again, as I said, it's sometimes... Are you sure? Emotional distress can precipitate this kind of thing, and sometimes it's a woman punishing herself. Ooh, you mean Kelly could be a religious woman? No, I mean, she just could be upset. Listen, it, again, let me, I haven't said All this right. in a long time. Let me, just, oh, let me no. get on my soapbox right. for one second. Right, one let second. me go take a leak while All you right. get on your soapbox. Just box. that... that our culture doesn't point out to women how painful and difficult it is to have an abortion, that there are biological bonds that are broken, that women feel a sense of loss, and there are all sorts of emotional turmoil that women go through as a result of, a, of an abortion, a terminated pregnancy, that no one prepares them for. There really is a big price that women pay for that, and people should be prepared for that. Guys, uh, you know, guy, I think guys would be much more um, able to cope emotionally with abortion, if, if it, even if it was their child. You know yes, that's right. It's a different. Well, it's a different biology. Their brain operates differently. They have different. Yeah, issues. guy'd be like, "Hey, Doc, can you uh, suck this onboard fetus out of me because uh, the WWF's rolled into town and it's a pretty big cage match tonight? And I'd like to get this over with." Oh. <laughs> Ryan. Oh, it's Ryan. Ryan. Hello? Yeah, Hello? yeah, Ryan. Oh, it's not Ryan. It's Ryan. It's Ryan. Uh, All right, listen, Dick Weed. Just hang on. I'm not going to argue with him over his name. I'm not taking any guff from some 14-year-old. Thank you, Drew. Marie. Yes. Turn your radio down. Okay. Are you in your car? Yeah. I had to hear you say dickweed a second time. <laughs> I'll nice. say the third time. That's, dickweed. That's nice. Hello? Hey, can I do like a guest voice on South Park? <laughs> I mean, just anything. No, dude. Yeah. No. Just something. We don't do that anymore, the guest voice thing. How about me? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Drew can't because he's a doctor. Yeah. You, know what, you know what kicks my ass? Drew has made his way into the celebrity baseball game at Dodger Stadium, the one with Billy Crystal and all these yeah. other guys, and I can't do it. They haven't asked me to do it, but that bastard Drew is wow. in on it. <laughs> Drew, that pull. hurts. Yeah. Marie? Yes. So what's going on? Okay. I'm 21 years old. And I've had the same boyfriend for about six years. Hello? Yep, we're here. Okay, but recently, for about the past year, I've gone out with like four different women. Mm. So, I don't know why I'm having these tendencies. I'm, I find myself uh, um, really attracted to women all the time, wherever I go. This would be a good betting call. Do I? Really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to break. Yeah. We're going to gamble on Marie's pass when we come back. Drew, you got a feeling? Yeah. Not, not, not overt, but there's something going on. Really? Yeah. You're in your car, Marie? Is this, is, this, yeah. is this not chaos? Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing there's a woman with her uh, on the floorboard of the car right now. No. Her uh, ass right against the clutch. I've got, I got a... I got a really? Drew's got, got a hunch. All right. Do uh, you guys got a dollar on you? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little love line gambling. we got to go to break. Marie? Uh-huh. All right. Just hang on. Okay. All right. All right. I'll explain how the rules work when we come back. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody now. The thing that's ironic about Alexandra Paul, I'm going to tell... Uh, our guest tonight. Um, I forbid her from coming on the show because she canceled two times, and, and she's been on three times, and also another time with her sister, too. So um, I, I really don't know how to lay the law down. Who's apparently, that? who is she? I don't even know. Who she's that from is. Baywatch. She's oh, the uh, sensible one. Oh right, 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 right. Matt Stone and Trey Parker both Who's here been from three years. Although I saw her on it yesterday. Oh. Great yes. Baywatch episode <laughs> yesterday. Here's the story. 
And, and here's the interesting thing about TV and, and, and movies. Once in a while, they have to do two things. They have to have the hero screw up a little bit so that somebody can have a vendetta against him. Right, right. Meaning Hasselhoff was doing a lifeguarding sort of internship or part of a lifeguard exchange program in Australia, okay? Uh -huh. And went to save a woman who was windsurfing and she died out in the water, okay? Now, fast forward four years, her husband, who is a lifeguard, is here doing a lifeguard exchange thing, and he's going to kill Hasselhoff because he <laughs> swears for revenge. But here's the problem that Hollywood has, and it's feasible. I'm sure it's based on something that happened, but probably something that happened to Hasselhoff before he got into this lifeguarding thing. But here's what I want to say. They made sure to make to let us know that it, it, Hasselhoff was in no way responsible for this woman's death. Right. That the mast from the windsurfing board caused massive hemorrhaging in her head, and his only mistake as a lifeguard was when he pulls a victim in and they're going into pylons under the pier and there's rough sea, you're supposed to put the victim between you and the pylon so that you're not hit in the head by the pylon and rendered unconscious. Right. He couldn't do that, and he took the blow to the head when he used his body to shield her, and he was rendered unconscious, unconscious. but when he woke up, they'd found her, but the autopsy said she'd already been dead. So my point is, is <laughs> even when it's your fault, it can't be your fault, but it's got to be a little bit your fault. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. It's, it's also to be a heroic effort. Right. Nonetheless. It's also the same same theory applies when they send a guy to prison for something he didn't do. Oh, right, right, we right. lost her. you got to be kidding. Nah, she was on a car phone. Screw her. Did Let me finish my prison story, Drew. Shut Drew's mic off. We I'm telling the guys about prison. The guy could never have gotten drunk and clipped some old man who was crossing the street and get thrown in prison for vehicular manslaughter. Right. There has to be a thing where he goes outside of the bar and there's a couple of guys calling him Pussy Boy and one of them pulls a knife and he pulls a karate move. And yeah, that was that guy. one movie with Nicolas Cage in yeah, it. Yeah, right. That was that movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I love? The great thing about movies is, is five people see him in the bar with these rednecks making fun of him. By the way, all you rednecks, uh, don't make fun of the guys who are decorated uh, Army Rangers. Right, right. By the way, this is a rule of thumb. Special ops. <laughs> See a guy coming in wearing a beret and maybe a uh, some uh, fatigues. Don't mess with that guy. Move on to the fat guy with the Macon <laughs> Bacon sweatshirt at the end of the bar. Sure, sure. Five guys uh, attack him in the bar. They fall him out to the parking lot. One guy pulls a butcher knife. They all jump on him, and the next thing you know, it's the judge saying, Five years mandatory sentence. That was the beginning. That was the beginning of Con Air. Remember, yeah. that was right. the beginning. Yeah. Now, who guy gets drunk at a bar, tries to protect his girlfriend? Could happen to anybody. You know, right. they had to pound it into your head before you even saw the movie. Listen, you could kill three or four people in this state and not do any real time. So d don't tell me. Don't tell me you couldn't have got twenty-five people from the bar who said, "Yeah, I saw these guys. Right, they were right. drunk. They chased him out. Had right. nothing to do with him." <laughs> All right. Do we straighten that out, Drew? Mm. Uh, turn Drew's mic on now, yeah? Thank you. We lost uh, Marie. Okay, turn it off now. That's, no, that's no, all we need no, to hear. Let me, let me, oh, yeah? Marie, we, what, what were you going to say about Marie? Anything? No, I don't want to gamble on her if she's gone. I don't want to gamble on Marie's ghost. I want to meet Marie. Maybe she'll drive over she'll the call studio. Back. Bridget. Yeah? You're 28. Mm-hmm. I don't you... have a, a question or a problem. I just was calling because uh, I saw the movie Basketball um, last week for work. And I just wanted to say, I went in with great hesitation, thinking that it was going to be really crass and sophomoric, but it was really quite clever and wonderful. And, and, uh, got Are you sure you saw Basketball? Yeah. yeah. That was Saving Private Ryan. That was something no, different. No, no, no. <laughs> Private Ryan would not be comical at all. Oh. Too heavy. But no, I saw it. I really liked it. Um, Are you on the payroll at Universal? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, freelance. This is my mom. No, 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 no. Mom? <laughs> no, it's not your mom. <laughs> But, uh, Which one of well, your moms well, uh, has a discharge again? Yeah, yeah that's Matt's yeah. mom. Yeah, we won't talk about Trey's mom. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, but sure. I don't. Yeah, I, actually, you know, the thing is, Matt and I haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah, we haven't oh, really? seen. We, we saw, saw the first we saw cut. a rough cut. These yeah, guys when are they like first us. Did it, and then we're going to see it for the first time on Tuesday. So wow. we think 
Maybe they added a bunch of stuff without us in it. Maybe they reshot it with Matt Damon and, Bat- and Matt Affleck. Made it all cool. Please stop being so humble. Brimming <laughs> yeah, with talent. It was, it was really, it was really cute. And yeah, um, you know, they're very humble guys when you're talking to them about their project. But as soon as you want in, just a bit part on one right, of their uh, upcoming guys. projects, they turn into big a holes. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget? Yes. So what do you do that you had to see it? Oh, well, um, I'm actually working on the premiere, putting together the premiere. So, oh, um, yeah. For Universal. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you have no vested interest in the movie being good. <laughs> we're, bringing in, we're bringing in the, um, the uh. game. You know, the basketball game. Oh, really? Uh, oh, that oh, that is so cool. When is that? It's coming is that up cool? Tuesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to be all drunk. Yeah, that all is. All drunk, Where's yeah. that going to be at? Uh, uh, Universal yeah, City, I guess. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. Universal, yeah, the yeah, City yeah. Walk thing, yeah. Oh, I don't know what's going on with these premieres these days, but they act, They have, like, carnival rides now and big events, and, and you're going to play the basketball game. Had, I'm not playing basketball. No, we're not doing a damn thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to. Getting drunk right, and right, getting right, inside right. the theater. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'd do it. Ryan. <laughs> I mean, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, you're 14. The other day I was masturbating, and when the ejaculation was, cool it's kind of cold i was wondering if that's bad mm-hmm. you put a uh, mint in your ass uh, before <laughs> no, you did it no, no. i've done that <laughs> no ryan don't worry about it okay it's okay yeah it's okay did you have the fan on no no what do you think that could have been drew i have no idea it's it's not, not, nothing bad that I know. His, not, ba- his balls were chilly. Yeah, <laughs> you had balls blue balls. A, a ice bag. It's not you. <laughs> you didn't have your uh, sack packed in uh, liquid nitrogen or anything. No. No. I like when people take my question seriously. <laughs> yeah. uh, they think too for me. No, 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 I didn't do that. Uh, no. you not have your yesterday, scrotum wasn't buried in liquid nitrogen. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what could that be, Drew? N- nothing I'm aware of. All right. Uh, o- over anxious fourteen-year-old. Uh, well, you're a lot of help, Drew. Uh, nothing you should worry about. Oh. Ryan, how often do you masturbate? Maybe once every other day. Mm-hmm. And you're 14? Uh-huh. When did you start? I used to do it more. Probably around 12. So you could be working up to at least once, twice a day now. Yeah. Let me explain how uh, the uh, the sperm works. It's a lot like a volcano. Oh, pray tell. Yeah. See, you know how the uh, the, the center of the earth is, is molten and, and, and it's hot? Yeah. Uh, you got to get to that part. He's not been masturbating long enough. I see. It's like getting into the, the magma in the center of the earth. I sort see. of like magma, there's, there's yeah. The hot, there's the hot stuff. There's the hot core. Yeah, yeah. there's the hot core that he, needs to, that he needs to, you know, Yeah, the, for the, for the first, release. First, uh, first three years I masturbated, it, it just came out like... Um, it was cool dust. It was like frost. Yeah, I actually yeah, hung, cool a, dust. hung an ice cold off my penis. And then since you've... Uh, in, now, Since you poured out the uh, now, center. Now it burns right through the hamper bottom and through the floor and on, onto the first floor of my house. I thought you'd uh, sort of evacuate everything in there. Now it just turns to dust, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the ghost, like in cartoons. <laughs> Drew loves it when I say this. I masturbate so much now that nothing comes out, just these ghosts. They, go, they fly around the room like, Whoa! And then, you know, the Scary POV, uh, the camera's here in their mouth. You know, it just yeah. goes right through their mouth. It's great. <laughs> Sarah. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, wouldn't it be great if, like, every tenth uh, sperm load you had was, like, the gag load? Where, like, yeah. you know, the snakes that come out of the toffee can would come like, out. You'd never know. It was, like, a different yeah, color yeah, or something. You, you know what? You that, had to think about it. That wouldn't be cool, actually. You don't <laughs> think so? <laughs> that, that really wouldn't be cool. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah? What's going on? I found out recently that during um, their divorce, my dad's second wife um, accused him of molesting me in my sleep Mm -hmm. and um for a while i kind of um because i'd had an uncomfortable relationship with my father for other reasons um i believed it but uh i just took a job back so and i avoided contact with him and uh but because i'm back in town i see him more often it kind of unavoidably and can't really believe it when I see it when I see him because there's no guilt or any you know what I mean there's no um, all right so do you think he did it or not well that's kind of my question is wouldn't you think that I'd have a sleeping disorder or something if he was doing that or it's very difficult to predict how this sort of thing is going to specifically affect a given individual okay and do you have relationships now um, yeah it, it certainly would affect your ability to have stable relationships do you ever cry when you're having sex Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I cry when I don't have sex, but uh, I've never cried at having we, sex. Well, maybe not. that's it. See, yeah. that could be something. 
Why are you crying when you have sex? Um, I actually have only done it with the stablest boyfriend I've had. You cried? But, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you have a lot of chaotic relationships? Nothing, I mean, nothing as serious as what you usually get on the phone. Okay. I mean, it may just coming from the disturbed uh, family system you were in that was enough to give you a difficulty having stable relationships. All right, let me uh, see if we can burn a call here. Audrey. Hello. Oh, hi. You're 24. You've been on hold for 81 minutes, I so I thought I'd talk to you. Oh, thanks. Um, you know, actually, when I started out, I, um, I had one question, but now I've had time to think of another, which I think is... All right. Well, you okay. get half a question. Oh, okay. Well, I, I took the morning after pill um, a month ago, and after that, I was constipated for an, for two weeks. Huh. Two weeks, and I couldn't go. And, wow. And this is what I did. I drank... I took um, suppositories. I drank castor oil. Um, I took the little correct all tablet. Drew, isn't it weird when you can't get something out of your ass that you get it out of your ass by stuffing something in your ass? Yeah. Doesn't that seem kind of it's ironic? Little, like little your ass is jammed up, so you're going to stuff something into it? Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, if you ever get really stuffed up again, magnesium citrate is the way to get things going. Oh, I'm sorry, what is that? Magnesium citrate. Um, okay, and yeah, because well, well, now it's, it's a reoccurring problem. Like now what's happening is um, I finally did go, and, and uh, now I can... How long before you... you how long did you go? Well, for how long during, like, it was a whole day process. Like, I went a lot. I, for two weeks worth. <laughs> wow. Oh, really? I mean, you went two weeks like, without without number yeah, two? Yeah, two weeks of that, right. I had to take off work because, what, like, the combination of, like, the night I took the castor oil yeah. and the correct all and the suppository just really kicked in the next day, and I all had right. to take off work. And, all right, anyway. Um, I yeah. thought we were so, coming on Loveline, and I thought we were going to get all these, like, hot stories, and I'd be all, you know, like, turning <laughs> on when I left here and everything. Yeah, yeah. you're going to need the VCR when you get oh, home. You can't just close your eyes. Animal. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to need to fill some, some good images. Right. <laughs> uh, get Just get a stool softener. See if that doesn't do it. We Like colates. Aw. Okay. Aww. My question God is, 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 a school so is a stool softener, is that a medication or an occupation? Is there a, a guy, man. like, working? What's your question? <laughs> okay, my question is, would it be, is it possible that people for, forever could, would have to take Correctol or something just to have I'm telling you, memory? I'm giving you your answer. Take a stool softener. You can, you can affect the motility of the bowel a little bit, but it's not going to be permanent. You need to just get things going normally, and it will keep going normally. But take a stool softener for a couple of weeks, okay? Softener, all yeah. right. All right. You, well, got, you got that, Trey? Yeah. We've yeah. had more in our share of uh, dookie calls yeah. tonight. Number two is a I guess uh, sometimes a fire a certain quality to our callers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, one of the one of the greatest South Park episodes is the uh, talking Dookie drill. You wouldn't know that because uh, you don't watch uh, cable TV. TV yeah. But um, I, I know it's a favorite of uh, most of our listeners. All right, we'll be back to uh, wrap up and wrap down. Hey, thank you very much. We know uh, it's been a hectic schedule for you and thank everything. Thank you. We learned a lot about discharge and all yeah, that Yeah, vaginal stuff. discharge and dookie. Yeah. It was a great, great evening. <laughs> Basketball is uh, out this Friday, the 31st. Go see it. Again, uh, thanks very much for coming out. Thank, thank you, guys. You. And until next time, it's Adam Kroller for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Rock. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of the staff or management or producers or directors or the advertising or anyone. But they might be Bob's. I'm Bob, and they're mine. The producer of Love Line is Ann Wilkins. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment. Grr. Arg. We now return you to your highly tested, regularly scheduled programming. Bye.